Welcome to episode 9 of PVTV, where we are talking all things solar and answering your solar questions. Today's question comes from John Mitchell. How you doing, John? Great way to promote PV. May I suggest a post about cha charging batteries with off-peak power? Advantages and disadvantages, focusing on the longevity of the battery. Thanks in advance. Thank you, John. Ross, what is off-peak charging when it comes to batteries and what does this mean? Off-peak charging is, uh, or as it's technically called, tariff optimization, is basically taking advantage um, through the use of your battery of having cheaper power at night yeah. than you do during the day and charging your battery using that cheaper power at night so it can discharge in the morning um, so you're not paying for expensive power from the grid. So you're saying that you that a lot of people, not everyone though, has cheap electricity during the midnight hours yeah. because there's less demand, so the price goes down. And then you can capture that in your battery so that when you wake up in the morning and everyone starts drawing power from the grid, you've got charge in your battery, you a full battery that you've used and charged from the cheap nighttime electricity. Correct. So John's question specifically says, um, you know, what is this about and when's it a good idea and how does it affect the longevity of the battery? So explain a bit more about, it sounds like a great idea. Yeah. Um, tell us a bit more about it and is, is there any downside to it? Well, long, I mean, batteries, they can't, they're not infinite. They, you can't just keep using them up and down, up and down. They are actually rated and based of how many times you charge and discharge mm. it. So the, the disadvantage for off-peak charging um, would be that you are running it through an extra charge cycle during the night mm -hmm. and you and probably an extra discharge during the morning. Mm. Sun will start to come out during the day and then it's going to charge up and discharge again. So you're charging and discharging your battery more often yeah. because it's charging from the solar in the day. You discharge it when you get home and it's charging again from that cheap, 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 cheap. The teep, <laughs> yeah. the cheap nighttime electricity yeah. and then it's discharging again in the morning. So you're kind of um, putting more more um, stress on the battery or more strain yeah. on the battery. And these lithium batteries, they're actually, like you're saying, rated for how much stress you put on them. And the more stress you put on them, um, the less life you get out of them. Yeah. Um, so, and how much does this affect the battery? Are we talking like halving the battery life? Is it going to barely affect it at all? Is it, yeah. is it or is it a that's big... A, that's a good question because it depends on what you set set the inverter to. So if you say, if you can, you can set this... Um, parameter in the inverter mm. so if you use, essentially say look every morning when i wake up mm -hmm. my power is double the cost but i know i don't use a whole lot of power in the morning so what i'll do i'll just well, at least my, not until the sun comes at out. least sorry until yeah. the sun comes out um so what i'll do is i'll just tell my inverter to charge my battery only maybe two kilowatt hours because cool. that's all i need to get me from 5 a.m to 6 a.m is when i turn the kettle and the toaster on and then i'm off to work anyway yeah so in that scenario then we're not putting a whole lot more stress in the battery, but mm. making good use of, of that cheap power during the night. Yeah. So your suggestion is that if you're going to do this technique called, what, what what's the fancy thing you called it? Tariff optimization. <laughs> right. If you're going to do tariff optimization, which means charging your battery from cheap nighttime electricity, um, be aware that it puts more strain in the battery and it can be a good idea to actually try to set the amount of charge that you do each night yeah. to match what you'll use between when you wake up and when the solar kicks in and the, yeah. the sun comes out in the morning. Yeah. So you're not putting the full strain on the battery, just, just using a little bit each night. Yeah. And then it's gone and then the sun comes out. Yeah, exactly right. And depending on where you live, you might live in areas where the sun uh, comes out a lot earlier than your peak period actually kicks in. So you don't need to use... What time does peak period kick in for most people? About 7 a.m. Yeah. So if the sun, sun starts coming up, uh, is it during daylight savings or oh. during non? Yeah. At say... 6 6.30 yeah. and it's enough power to supply you for your morning You don't need to ritual. do the force charge. You don't charge. need to do the force charge but then you've got days where it's not sunny. Yeah. So maybe would you say for maybe six months of the year changing that parameter in your inverter so that during winter you're maybe having a little bit more power in the battery and then in summer you're taking that strain off the battery and letting it... Yeah. Would that be a good idea? Is it That's hard to do? not a bad idea. I just um, thought of that. Yeah. I've never... Yeah. I've never <laughs> <laughs> you could do that. <laughs> Um, but then there's also other options, okay. which is where... So that's option one. That's option one. We'll call that the manual option. We'll call that the manual you, option. You go out every season and change it to suit, change your inverter settings to suit the season. Yeah, so and it's not too hard to do. It it's takes not too a hard few to minutes. Do. Um, yeah. Option two is the automatic version mm -hmm. or the smart version. Mm. And that would be 
this little computer box here, which is called Reposit. Mm. Um, amongst Reposit's many features, one of it, one of the features is uh, knowing when your cheap power is and when your expensive power is and watching weather data for your area mm. and it will charge your battery based off what based off historical data it mm. watches your usage for a while and if it, if it learns that you use two or three kilowatt hours during the morning and it sees a cloudy day coming up it'll charge your battery during the night two or three kilowatts mm. so you've got just enough for the morning usage um, and you haven't overcharged or undercharged and days where it picks up it's going to be a nice sunny day the next day mm -hmm. doesn't bother charging it at all Got it. So option one is the manual option where you go and change your inverter each season to yep. charge a couple of kilowatts during uh, summer and a little bit more during winter. So you've got um, more cheap electricity available yep. before the sun comes out during winter. Option two is you look for something like this, which is Reposit. Um, and this will, um, it's kind of like a brain that will calculate that for you and work out the weather and the seasons so that um, it's always going to give you just enough for yeah. how much your family or your house uses, which is really, really cool um, if you can't be bothered changing that manually, yeah. which many of us can't or we forget we have good intentions. So um, this thing is about, to add onto a solar system, is about a thousand bucks roughly installed, depending how many faces you have. Um, so, you know, it's not as cheap as just doing it yourself. Yeah. But over time, if you're not going to do that anyway, this, this can pay itself off by doing that for you. Um, and in terms of the life of your battery, if you're doing the full discharge and charge, charge and discharge every night, that can put a bit of strain on the battery. So try to limit that because you're going to shorten the life of your battery the yeah. more strain you put on it. Um, so just keep the yeah. charge to what's necessary. So I mean, most batteries these days are around 7,000 cycles and a cycle is charging it up and then discharging it. So the more you're doing that, the quicker you're going to run through your cycles. Yeah. It's probably the easiest way to think of the... Uh, the longevity side of yeah. of peak charging, um, but there is some good savings to be made yeah. money wise using yeah. off peak charging. So, so off peak charging, good idea. Do it the right way and just do it for what's necessary. Don't be greedy and fully put all the strain in your battery if you don't need to, um, and be smart about it. And if you can change your inverter with the seasons, is this a thing where else that's particular to inverters, or can most batteries and most inverters do this? Most inverters can do it. Yeah, I yeah. haven't come across an inverter yet from all the inverters we've installed that couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, and yeah. Yeah, there's actually a video on our page if you uh, have any of our inverters that yeah. we've installed um, that will show you how to do this yourself. And it yeah. takes a few minutes. So um, if you go to the video section of our Facebook, you'll find them there or just ask below this video and we'll link you to it. And if you get any more questions about solar and batteries, leave them in the comments below this video and we'll answer them for you soon. John, thank you so much for your question and have a great day. Take care.